that these are the characters which are inscribed within the single or the double quotes or the triple quotes we also say that right and the triple quotes are the dog strings so we'll just define it in a very single line that is uh, anything of the characters inscribed in the single or double or you can say in the triple also quotes that's it this is all as strings right so if i say i is equals to like something name over there or if i say like uh, j would be equals to something a any word let's say driving license driving okay so if I go just to check on to the type of I and J2, we will be getting an STR obviously, right? So that is a STR category. Now in string, you have two different modes. One is called as string replication and the another is called as string concatenations. Okay. And that bo both things are very much quite different. Okay. So two terms, what I have said, the replication and then you have concatenation <clears throat> now how this works see if i say a string let's say an apple is there okay this is a string which is an apple now if i multiply this with a number <coughs> only of the multiplication part right because you cannot add subtract and things with a different data type you cannot add a string with an integer with a float okay with a complex right but you can multiply it okay so what if i multiply this with an integer right so let's say apple multiplied by five so if i run this i'll be getting the apple printed for five times in the same manner see this is an apple printed for one time then second suddenly the second starts and the third and the fourth and then the fifth okay so basically when you multiply the things with the strings you get the replication of that right now what if i just say like a name plus i i is also a string right I is a string here. So if I run this, I'll get an output name name. Right? But what if I add this with a number? You will get an output obviously. But that will be a error. Right? You will get something that will be a type error. Okay. So can only concatenate string, not integer to string. So what you need to do is you need to convert this 34 so what you'll do is name plus 34 right so 34 will be inside the quotes so we can say that this is now become a string all right okay if you run this you'll get name 34 this time okay and that will be your actual thing right how to write up the things with if you are doing with the numbers then you have to go through this okay all right now uh, with the just a second sorry just a minute yeah so with the input function what what input function does anyone we have discussed in the last, last class what input statement does If anyone can tell me quickly, what does the input statement does? Working of input statement. Sir, so it takes the input from the user. Yeah, obviously. So it prompts the user to give any input, right? Now, that can be of any type, like that can be of integer, that can be of float, and that can be of complex too. For complex, we use some different methods, I'll tell you that too, right? so for integer we take int for complex we are taking uh, sorry for complex i'm saying for float we are taking float 
for string by default whatever you take in the input it comes in, inside the string and for the complex you need to do evaluate evaluations okay or you just go with the eval that will be fine okay so these three uh, these four things are there right okay so let's say that if we want to take some input in like we want to take some marks input okay and then want to calculate the overall percentage let's say total marks is excuse me sir yeah sir please zoom out sir earlier it was fine sir you again have zoomed in too much sir it's not we are not able to see it sir i'm it's fine now so much better so earlier it was perfect sir okay so let's say that total mark is equals to 1000 now you need to take the marks got by the student right so let's say student marks so st marks i'm taking okay now that will be obviously in some points or like an integer even if the student scores 96 point something right so we'll say it as 96 points so we need to take it if if the user has got like 89.9 .9, okay right so if we take inputs inside the string and that is another matter if we take in inside it an in integer what will happen 0 0.9 will be up right so we need to take inflow because we need also the decimals that will also matter right so we'll be doing it with float and with the input sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, okay, that's fine. Input, and then you'll be writing center marks of 10. Okay, now what are the marks of 10? How will you calculate the percent? So, percent calculation will be equals to, yeah, how we calculate it? ST marks. Divide by the total marks. This will raise you an output. Let me make it short. I'll let it be two marks. Okay. So two marks. And divide by multiply by hundred. I'm doing correct. Okay. So I'll be printing for cal. Mm -hmm. So in does sense let's say uh, eight eight six is the max. So that eighty point eighty six percent. Right? This is done. Hey, that's better. So what if we use if we don't use the float, the same thing. You find an error out there that is unsupported operand for string and integer so basically here it is an integer and this by default always in the input you get a string right so you need to change the types by default you get it right we do integer 2 and if it is more than 88.5 will be rounding up right so print per cal or if you say if you right we'll be learning it afterwards that if like uh, this per cal value is equal equals to whatever the point comes right right if it is greater than 0.5 you will be making it round off right we need to check it basically what what you receive first of all so print vocal is a 88.6 so you can make it round off to one right will round function will be lying at we will have confusion right now okay so let's run this and let's say 898 899 so it will be 89.9 .9. okay that's that is things okay all right now uh, whatever the things we are entering like if we say length of a variable can be calculated with len function 
right? So let's say this is equals to C. So we'll say if print the length of the C. So you get 58 characters are there, including the spaces. All right, including the spaces we are talking about. So you, you basically pass this len function to find the number of instances or literals or identifiers in a data type, that's it. Okay, whatever the data type is there, you basically pass this to find the instances of the literals, identifiers and all. Okay, now we'll be learning arithmetic we have done, now we are learning comparison operators, a relational, what do you say? Okay, so what comparison operator does? It basically compares the values and it break down into a boolean value. All right, two comp uh, two values will be breaking down into a boolean. Boolean, you understand, like true and false, or one or zero, whatever things. Okay. Now we have three different uh, six different types over there, right? First is equals to how this is like 3 equal equals to 4 so this is a statement where we are checking not making it as not making it equal or not assigning any value we are checking whether 3 is equals to 4 or not all right next not equal to so 3 is not equals to 4 this could be a statement okay again greater than would be 3 is greater than 4 lesser than would be like 3 is less than 4 Then comes something called as greater than equals to. Now that would be like if I say 3 is greater than equals to 4. So here come your two conditions. Okay, I have zoomed in the gate, sorry. So here you come with two conditions. That is, first you will be checking whether 3 is greater than 4 or not. If it is there, if only, even if the one condition is true, the overall values will be coming as true. So 3 is not greater than 4, then the next condition will be going that 3 is equals to 4, again it is not equals to 4. So if I make 3 is greater than equals to 2, so 3 is not equals to 2, but 3 is greater than 2. So you will be getting true, okay, the output. So this will be three is less than equals to two and three is less than n is equals to two so this statement will be giving you wrong inputs. okay so these are the things basically equals to not equals to greater than lesser than greater than equals to and lesser than equals to. if you run all these things so you need to write print statement of so just a minute So you see false true false true true false well, this is we are getting. okay these are basically the comparison operators and it works basically a lot okay these are basically all the comparison now let's come up to the boolean operators now the boolean results what you are getting basically right so that operators are also there boolean operator will be going through that
So you might have learned the truth tables and on class 11, 12, too, right? So this gives result based on the truth tables here. And or not. Okay. So how it works? The very first is your AND, which stands for multiplication, right? Okay. So how it works? Let's see. So your one true AND, okay, one true and false will result in. You all know, right? This, this I hope you all, all know. So, what is the value of true and uh, true? Hmm? Everyone knows this. Anyone who don't know this? So basically, multiplication is like in the sense, see, consider true as 1 and false as 0. Okay, you put down the values basically. True is equal equals to 1. Sorry. 1 and false is equal to 0. That's it. Consider all this, right? And after this, just a minute. Okay, so 1 multiplied by 0, you will be getting 0. 1 multiplied by 1 is giving you 1. 0 multiplied by 1 is giving you 0 and 0 multiplied by 0, 0. I hope that's just clear to you, know, right? It's very simple. Okay, going ahead. In the same case, there is the working of OR. Okay. Alright, so we write as, as 1 and 0. Okay, 1 multiplied by 0, right? And then 1 multiplied by 1, sorry, 0 and 1, 0 and 0. You see the result 0, 1, 0, 0. Only 1 is true. That's it. Okay, so true always stands for 1. Now, with the same thing it will be for or so only both the conditions when both the conditions are true only and only when the left and right hand side you talk about or all the conditions where you are applying the and only when all the conditions are true you are going to get your correct output otherwise everything will be false okay now or stands for addition So true, that is 0 plus 1, true, here things will be only false if both the conditions are false, otherwise everything would be true, obviously because if you are adding something with 0, no matters, right, nothing matters there. So it is not going to give you any such typical results. Like this. Okay. So write one or zero. One or one. Zero or one. Zero or zero. So there you get all the one and only one zero. Right? And at the last it comes with the not. Where you can say basically a negative. 
or sometimes you also call as negation negative not doing subtractions okay so true and all this again starts for this so we say the not of true will be always false and not of false will be always true that's the thing always okay this is how it works don't go with one and zero and all okay maybe it, it works also same so if i say not true or not one it means zero or false and if i say not not false it means true so see not one means zero that is false and not zero means true that is one okay how many of you didn't understand this boolean operators clear to everyone quickly everyone clear this Yeah, quickly write on your chats. Anyone having doubts on this? Do reply because I will not get to know how much. Quick. Having doubts? No. Okay. Fine. All right then. So uh, we'll give you a question. Quick. Just one task. Simple task. So the question is, we want to take two input, from the user, I want to compare, which is great. Or just whether they are equal or not. So this is my question. We need to take two inputs from the user and then want to compare whether the whatever the inputs they have given uh, the user has given as equal or not so quickly write your commands in this chat box so what is the code you will be writing you write in the chat box quick Answer. everyone Yeah, anyone quickly. How we are going to solve this? Hmm. 
this we need to take two inputs and want to compare whether they are equal or not it's very simple okay even the code is quite easy yeah i'll uh, i'll ask you pranav suri yeah tell me how we are going to do this so basically we will input two numbers p1 and p2 p1 and p2 when we will mention it as we have not mentioned any of which type of them we can take it as float we would make them float and then we would compare it uh, they will use the comparator uh, they will use the comparison operator to compare it and it could tell us so uh, mm. yeah. if p1 equal equal to p2 then it could uh, tells it could tell that it's the uh, If P one equal to P P one equal equal to P two, then it would tell us that the two numbers are equal. Otherwise, it would tell us they are not equal. After this, we'll be just printing whether they are equal or not. That's it. We just want to know, right? I'll say P one. Not equal. That's it. Done. Very easy. Why you guys are taking? Just write your codes. Whatever you know, you write your codes. Okay, right? Okay. Uh, next question. I will be taking it as like take three inputs from the user. Okay. And compare whether any of them are equal or not. How will do this? Anyone quick? Any of them are equal or not? We want to compare. Now. So, yeah. So this is how So we can take it as if P one is equal. If P one is equal to P two, and and P two is equal to P three, in that case, it would make it that the numbers are equal. If P one not equal to, in other words, if it's not equal, it would say that the number P three would be directly equal to P two. That. Unless. I didn't understand what you said. You do one thing. You write your code in the chat box. Okay, you are saying to do like this. It is giving false. I want to check whether any of them are equal or not. Like if I say five, four, five, so two are equal at least. Hmm. Two numbers are equal. Oh, I have seen a lot of answers over there. Hmm. This is the right one. Navina Padiki has it or something. Akshat has also tried something x equal equals y. You try to give or in between that would work. Okay, so 
Right, so you'll get the answer if it is true or false, 4, 5, 4. So it is true because two numbers are correct. Okay, like that. All right, we will be doing like this, right? Next, we come up to assignment of witness. So it work is to just assign values to the operators and how it works and let's say you are doing an addition so basically equals the very first one what we are doing till now right so x equals to 5 what we are doing assigning values now here if i say okay i need to write the print statement then i am assigning that x is equals to 5 okay not printing anything Now I'll be doing addition to this. That would be x plus equals to 5. That is I'm having 5 now and what I'm doing is adding more 5 to this. Okay. In the same way you can go with the subtraction. And then you can write x minus equals to 5. Same will be going through multiplication. Even with the integer divisions or modulus, whatever I say, say integer flow division. What do you say the uh, exponentiations, All right? like this. okay oh, all right something has got mistake oh we have used print there okay. we need to print x not this these are the operations and we need to print the x So we see the outputs over there like 5, 10, 5, 25, 5, 0, 1.0 and 1.0. Okay. So basically the x is was 5 and then 5 plus 5, 10, then 10 minus 5, 5, then 5 multiplied by 5 and then divide by 5 and that has how the results are there. Okay. So like this assignment operators goes. Very simple. 
okay next we have called as identity operators so it describe basically that they are being compared with the objects like whether things are in the same memory location or not okay so you can say used to compare the objects whether in the same location or not all right and there are two types is and is not okay one is is and the next is is not so like if i say that if this is a which is equals to a i m l b l okay and this is b equals to like open c v right like d l num p right. so a and b are the two different things right now and what i will be doing is we will be checking whether a is b or not so obviously false right so what we will do is now we'll we'll think a is equals to a i let's say okay b is equals to ml c is equals to b l three different and now i say print whether d is equal equals to a oh, sorry i'll be doing at d is equals to a and then so you get it true results right basically the values are same over there so what is say we need to go with the id the address okay that that means now there are various ways of printing something like if i say x is equals to 12 y is equals to 24 so what are the ways of printing this now you know right so we'll be discussing right with print x is equals to giving a gap writing there and print x so you get the values of the print x okay next next steps could be like print y is equals to percent d and then percent y could be the value no commas over there right next print y is equals to this and then braces the third braces okay and then format y then print y equals to str of y uh, not like this sorry like this or what you can do the plus two okay the all if i run this you'll be getting x equals 12 y equals this 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 okay if in the last even if i take x what you find here is these spaces if i remove the space you'll get the things x12 y24 y24 x12 these are the ways now if you are thinking like with the y if you are using percent d for once so if i print x and y for the both things okay so we don't want to use the percent for both the time so what are we doing out there we'll be printing x equals percent d and y equals percent d that's it and percent type for one and then x comma y that's it so x equals 12 and y equals 24 that's it very easy okay typecasting we have learned how the things are being changed okay so these are calendar we have also done right so any uh, doubts in the things of the assignment what you have done last class okay now if you are counting uh, like the leap days between uh, like leap years or leap days between some years so we need to import the calendars right 
and then working would be like I want to see whether 2000 is a leap year or not. So what I will be printing out there is print whether the calendar dot is leap year. I want to see 2000 is a leap year or not. So it is true. It is a leap year. Okay. I want to check whether 2004 is a leap year or not. Right. And it is true. Right. So. Like 2021, 2024, or 2000. 2020. So, 2020 is also giving up leap year. So, how many leap years are there till from 2000 to 2020? If you want to go through, how many leap days have been there? So, calendar dot leap days you want to count. So leave days like from 2000 to 2020. So there are total five leave days. Okay. And in the calendar you might know, right? Things start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and like that, right? So if I want to see, print the calendar. First week day. That is 0, right? So any you know like the things are there with the calendar functions at the directory okay you go with there in the calendar module to find various things right month month name so how does the month name work so we'll be going through that like So, we hope there will be something. So, it help on localized month in module time, right? So, list of week reference will be there and methods to be right. Okay, formats we need to find over there. So, here are the things. Okay, look, we'll be going with the model three formats. Alright, so any doubts in your assignment, guys? Whatever we have discussed till now today, also you'll be getting your assignment. Assignment tick, I hope you have right. You can go through the things and you can make your assignments. Okay. So yeah, any doubts to anyone, I can stop the video.